let's get started. Uh, a few minutes late, but it should be fine. I am Florian, I'm working here in Singapore for Senta, and uh, yeah, I like to do things with Elasticsearch. Um, I chose this topics about, topic about full text search, uh, searching the languages of Singapore. Unfortunately, I don't speak any of the language, even English is not my na native language. So um, if there's any mistake, please bear with me. So first, what is Elasticsearch? Anybody using Elasticsearch already? <coughs> One, two, three, four, five. That's good. Uh, so it's a distributed search engine. Uh, it's running as a server, uh, so all the communication is done using HTTP. Using HTTP and uh, the representation is JSON everywhere. Uh, it's written in Java, uses the library Lucene underneath, and that's also where all the full text search features are coming from. So those are mainly uh, implemented by Lucene. So if you want to get started with Elasticsearch, that's pretty easy. Um, they provide archives uh, on their website, so it's a standalone application. And you can just unpack it and start it using a script. I will do that here as well. I downloaded it already. But the version I'm using uh, just got released this night, so uh, it's leading edge. But everything should be working fine. So I'm starting Elasticsearch using a script. It's up after a short while, and we can just access it on the default port. Nine thousand two hundred, and we can already see that it's up. So it just returns a JSON document with some version information and some uh, some IDs that are being automatically generated. Um, it's nice to have it up and running easily, but we can also use it immediately. So I'm using Kibana here, but I'm using only uh, this simple tool inside it here. So that's like an HTTP uh, tool here. So you can use it to do simple requests through Elasticsearch. <coughs> so in the background, it just does HTTP calls. I don't want to type all of that, even though it has code completion here, so it's quite good to use but I'll just copy and paste for now as we are only 15 minutes. So if you want to store something in Elasticsearch, you can just do a simple post request. So that's what we're doing on top here. Um, just sending it here. And uh, Elasticsearch autom automatically stores the content that we are passing in here. So that is the request button down here, which is just a simple JSON document. So in this case, uh, it has a title and just a content element. And we are storing that here to this path segments up here. So um, those are just two names we chose. So box is the name of what's being called the index. So that's a logical collection of documents. And uh, doc is the type of the th thing that we are indexing. So this defines the structure, somehow the schema of the documents. But we didn't have to configure anything up front. So we could have chosen any names here, and Elasticsearch would happily, happily uh, store them. So what we can do next is to just search them. So we are accessing this underscore search endpoint here, and uh, passing in what is being called a query DSL. So that's a JSON structure as well uh, that describes the query <coughs> that we want to execute. So in, the, in this case, we just tell it, please find anything in the content field that has the term Singapore in it. The match query is the go-to query if you uh, want to do full text search, so that's what you're mostly using. If we're executing this, um, Elasticsearch will answer with, uh, with a longer JSON document. So there's some metadata up here. But the most important thing is that down here, there's this hits array, and it contains our document that we have indexed before. So even without any configuration, we can just push data to Elasticsearch, and it will uh, make it searchable immediately. So let's go back to the slides. Skip this, skip this, skip this. So how does this work? Um, Elasticsearch uh, has what is being called an inverted index that is also provided by the scene. So that works exactly like the index in a book. So uh, it has like 
the terms uh, that are then assigned to the documents the term occurs in. So in our case, there are the four terms here, um, and all of them are in document one in this case. So what happens now is then when we're doing a search, it will do a lookup in this index, and when searching for Singapore, uh, it will just notice, okay, document one has this term in it. So that's what makes the search really, really fast. But uh, the drawback is that this index needs to be populated up front, so this needs to be built. And the way to build this index is uh, during the so-called analyzing process uh, that takes the incoming text uh, and splits that into terms and tokens and uh, puts them in the index. All of this is uh, application specific, so you might uh, want to configure this. So the analyzing uh, processes the incoming text um, uh, by using an analyzer. An analyzer uh, consists, among other things, uh, of a tokenizer that splits the text into words and then one or more token filters that does some processing, for example, lower casing that we've also seen for the example. So when lower casing the terms, that allows you to search for upper and lower case. The default is the standard analyzer that does exactly that, like it splits on word boundaries for Western languages, that means uh, white space, uh, punctuation and things like that. And it lowercases the terms, so that is why we are automatically allowed to search for single terms in the uh, text that is being passed in. <coughs> so when working with different languages, um, this standard analyzer might not be enough. There are also several pre-built analyzers available, and most of them are pretty similar um, in the way that they are doing the same steps. So many of them are doing character normalization. For example, languages like uh, French, you have this funny accents um, that you might not really need in the search index. And also, uh, a lot of the analyzers are doing uh, stemming, which means reducing words to the base form. And that allows you to search, for example, for singular and plural. So before we put in the search index, um, it does this stemming thing, and then there's a normalized version of that in the index. Um, besides using those pre-built analyzers, you can also configure custom analyzers, so that's uh, pretty easy to do. Um, but it's important that all of those analyzers are configured up front, so you need to decide that before you are indexing your data. So what does it look like? Um, this is one example for configuring an English analyzer. We are just doing a put request. A uh, put request in this case creates an index and giving it a name, box.dm, and then we can pass in this mapping, which is like the schema for the documents, and we tell Elasticsearch for the content field to please use the English analyzer. And this will then uh, allow to do language-specific searches. For example, this uh, days and day, and you can search for day, and it will find content that also has days. And this gives the use of the impression of an intelligent search. So it's important to note that the index term determines the search quality. So uh, what you are doing during analyzing uh, heavily influences how good your application is at searching. And uh, analyzing is done both during index and search time. OK, so now moving on to the languages itself. So everybody knows that there are four official languages in Singapore. So Malay, Mandarin, Tamil, and English. We already looked at English somehow, but let's have a look at the other three ones. So the national language of Singapore <coughs> is Malay. And uh, that's also why the national anthem is in Malay. So those are the first two uh, lines of the national anthem of Singapore. Um, I won't try to pronounce it. Um, but you can easily use this text. Uh, any Malay speakers in the room? No one. Ah, yeah, some of them. So um, we can just take this text and uh, push it to Elasticsearch. So exactly like we did with the text before. And of course, uh, that, that will work as well. So for example, we can search for this term, Bahagia, at the back. 
and that means happiness, so searching for happiness, and doing exactly the same thing as before, and it works, of course, because uh, Malay uses white space uh, to separate the words, so um, you can easily use that to search Malay language. So the standard analyzer works for Malay. Um, there is no language-specific analyzer available, but um, there is an Indonesian stem available, and the languages do have some overlap, so it might work to, to test it if you want to have some stemming. Uh, you might test with the Indonesian stem. There might also be cases where it's not the same. Moving on, Tamil. Um, of course, very different. Uh, the script is different. Um, I can't read it. I can't pronounce it. Anybody can? Do you know what, is, what it means? Yeah. It's, it's supposed to be a proverb. I don't know if it's, uh, if it's very common. So it means cold food is soon old food. Um, I don't understand the words, but uh, we can already see that there are two words that are the same. So I guess that means food, right? Okay. <laughs> so um, we can do the same. Um, so we can uh, search a meal with Elasticsearch after having indexed the content. So um, the most notable thing about this is that uh, Elasticsearch doesn't care about the script itself uh, because it does all the comparison on the byte level, and that's why it can work with uh, all languages. So there is no special language handling for Tamil available and I don't know how difficult it would be to build uh, but the standard analyzer can be used uh, because it splits the words correctly yeah, and Elasticsearch compares terms on the byte level. Finally, I guess that's something more people can reach. Um, I can't as well. And also my creativity decreased a bit, so that just means the other <laughs> single form. Um, and that's of course Mandarin, and again, it's a different script, and uh, the speciality here is that Mandarin, and I think other Chinese scripts as well, doesn't use white space for separating words. So that makes it far more difficult to work with. So, um, you can use this uh, standard tokenizer that is being used with uh, Chinese characters, um, but it will split to single characters. And that's not a good idea because um, you will have a lot of uh, incorrect matches in this case. That's why there's a very simple uh, analyzer integrated in Elasticsearch, the CJK analyzer. And what it does, it uh, splits into the single characters and then builds uh, bigrams out of that. So what that does, it, it takes this term here and it builds just the pairs of characters again. And this, this will be put into the index and when searched, um, it will again uh, take the bigrams of the search term and compare if those are in the index. So that's a very, very simple way to work with uh, Chinese text. There will be some uh, matches that are not intended, but uh, it's, it's simple to do. So again, we can search for this term Singapore here, and uh, it will find our documents. <coughs> if we do have enough time, I can also show you one example for searching Chinese text. I have prepared that again. So this might be a bit slower in my browser here because of the script. So um, I'm preparing a new index here, um, uh, BoxCM just passing in to use the CJK analyzer and yeah, works immediately. Then I'm indexing our example document that just says Hello Singapore. Then I'm indexing what is the, at least parts of the Wikipedia page on uh, Singapore that of course contains the term Singapore quite a lot. And then somewhere down here there should be another week list. Yeah, that's the Wikipedia page on Berlin, which doesn't contain the terms in the book. So um, now we have three documents in our index. That's not big data, but proves the point that when we are searching for the term Singapore here, it is slow because it has to retrieve all of this data, but it finds our two documents. So the, the entry on Berlin is not included. And also, um, 
what's notable is that the Wikipedia entry comes first, so that's not a coincidence. Um, that's caused by the relevance ranking that is internally done by uh, Elasticsearch and Lucy. So uh, that's because the, the entry contains the term Singapore and the other one. Yeah. Um, the CJK analyzer works for simple cases. It's easy to use, but there's also an alternative, the smart Chinese plugin, and that is smart. So um, it uses some, uh, some probabilistic approaches and comes with a, a trading model um, that can determine the words. So it's supposed to work better than the other one, but needs to be installed as a plugin. So, as a conclusion, uh, each language has its specialities in Singapore, but there's basic support for all of them in Elasticsearch. And like in real life, uh, working with multiple languages can be challenging, so there are several things to take care of, where you want to store the different languages, separate index, separate fields, so, um, or even determining what the user is using as a language can be difficult, so there's a lot to think about. That's all I have. Those slides are also on my website. Um, I've written a German book on Elasticsearch. You should definitely go read it and buy it. And I'm